The Bar Star Podcast, hosted by Stephen O'Reilly, is a podcast about working musicians, their friends, and their opinions. Stephen is a musician in Louisville, Kentucky, who has... Wait a second. This guy's a drummer, not a real musician? Somebody gave a drummer a microphone for his voice? The hell? Unreal. Unbelievable. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Bar Star Podcast. I am your host, Stephen O'Reilly. You guys missed me, didn't you? Maybe a little? Just a tiny bit. Eh? Eh? Whatever. Uh, before I go anywhere with this episode, I want to thank Steve Owens and the Fascination Street Podcast for doing a cool interview with me. Uh, I've never been interviewed before, so it was kind of weird. Interesting, and uh, I thought the show came out good. And if you haven't checked out his show, you need to do that. Uh, he has some really cool guests on there. He talks to some cool people and some industry people and non-industry people and actors and musicians and cooks and all kinds of shit. So make sure you check him out. It's uh, Fascination Street Podcast, and uh, the host is Steve Owens. Nice guy. So thank you, my brother, for doing that interview with me. I appreciate it. So go check out his show, and maybe you guys will dig it, and you'll find a new podcast you'll like, and maybe you'll uh, dig him more than me. I fucking doubt it. I mean, I'm kind of cool. Okay, I'm really not kind of cool. I'm totally lying. I hope everybody had a good week. I hope everybody is doing well, and as always, I hope you guys went out and did some shit. Please make sure you check out my sponsor, Prophecy Inc., located in the... Fabulously amazing. Oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. Highlands in Louisville, Kentucky. So obnoxious, I love it. Make sure you go in the shop and mention the Bar Star Podcast. You will get 10% off your tattoo by any artist in the shop. Now, as you have probably figured out from reading the brilliantly written description, for the first time in a while, I am flying solo. So I'm sitting here, I got a fresh cup of coffee, and it started making me think about some shit as I was drinking my fresh cup of coffee. About a week ago, I've always had a Keurig and a pot, a regular brew-style coffee maker. Or should I say, I've always had a regular-style brew coffee maker, and then I bought a Keurig five, six years ago, whatever. I like the Keurig for its convenience. Cup of coffee is always the same every time. Blah, blah, yada, yada, barf, barf. So last week I switched back to the coffee pot to use for the majority of the time because honestly, Keurig pods are fucking expensive. And after all, I am kind of a broke musician. I mean, Stacy makes a lot of money, but that's because Stacy's special and I don't know why the fuck she married me, but whatever. But seriously, I, I, uh, I switched back for a while to majority using the coffee pot. And what I found was that I didn't like it. The first pot I made, I was like, this is fucking gross. Man, I was all complainy and whiny and bitchy. And so I made another pot, and that one was kind of gross too. And then I started thinking about it, and I went, wait a minute. Is the coffee really gross, or am I just being a spoiled fucking little bitch because I've been using a Keurig for four or five years? It was the latter. I literally got so used to the Keurig that everything else tasted like shit to me. And it got me thinking how... We as humans buy into our own bullshit. For example, most of you noticed there was no show last week. I didn't post a show. The week before, I was on Steve Owen's show, Fascination Street Podcast, which I've already talked about. But last week, I didn't have a show. You want to know why? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Uh huh. Do you? Do you? Do you? Uh huh. See how annoying that is? Yeah, that's why there was no show last week, because I was trying to do something cool, because I thought I could do all kinds of neat little shits, and I fucked up my own show, and I couldn't post it. Let that sink in for a minute. That, number one, I fucked up my show. Number two, I'm admitting it to you, because I'm okay with it. Most people are like, oh no, 
Oh no, it, it was the computer's fault. The the the, the, the computer's cr- it crashed and burned right down for me. Shut the fuck up. You screwed something up and you don't want to admit it. Hey guys, I fucked it up. My bad. No show last week. Oh well. Now you know. But how this all ties into the coffee pot thing that I was talking about a second ago before you guys think I'm nuts, because I'm really not. I just got so conditioned to the Keurig because it's pretty much perfect every time. It's a little pot. It brews at whatever the fucking temperature is. It does its thing. It's got pre-measured coffee. It comes out one cup at a time, and it's fucking perfect every time. But using a coffee maker has been acceptable for the past, I don't know, million fuck years, right? Because we've had coffee pots forever, and they were fine. So I found it fascinating that we as humans, myself included, obviously, that we just get so used to shit that when we go back to what we used to do before or what we had previously done, better English, sir, that it seems, uh, oh, it's so archaic. I can't believe I did that. What the fuck do we think we are? I get it. Advancements are awesome. I get it. Advancements are fantastic and they advance our society and us as a human race and we should all be... Oh, I'm sorry. What What happened? Yeah, exactly. I, I feel the same way. Advancements are great. But sometimes it's just... It's just a fucking cup of coffee. Coffee's coffee. And it's fantastically, amazingly good. Right? As I was thinking about the differences and how we spoil ourselves and we get used to different shit, and I went down this documentary rabbit hole. For those of you that checked out my episode with Jason Gosine, uh, he referenced a documentary in there called Artifact, which I had not seen. So I found it, I watched it, and it was really fucking good. Really good. You're probably sitting there going, dude, how the fuck are you tying this to coffee? Because everything's tied to coffee. That's all the fuck you need to know. So in this documentary, basically, the short version is, without giving away a bunch of details in the whole film, Jared Leto, who is a singer for 30 Seconds to Mars, he basically wanted to start filming the recording of the new record. And I can't remember what the record was because this documentary came out two, three years ago. But he started recording like five or six years ago. The process was a long time. But what happened was, what happened was, in the middle of filming, their record company sued him for $30 million, which is kind of funny and ironic, even though they, oh, well, that's the amount of damage. No, motherfucker, he's just trying to be cute. But the reason this documentary is so cool, at least to me, what I enjoyed the most about it was Jared Leto breaks down the record industry. It's a great look into the business of the record business, of the music business, of the music industry, whatever the fuck you want to call it. This documentary artifact is a great look inside at how the structure works and how the money changes hands and where it comes from and who does what and why record deals are good and why record deals are bad. And I really, really enjoyed it. Most of my musician friends will enjoy it if not all of them. Some of the non-musician listeners to my show may or may not enjoy it. That's just go find it and watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. I I don't know if you guys will dig it or not. But whether you're a musician or not, it's really, really cool. Uh, Look inside the actual record industry. I don't know why I'm stuttering so much today. You stuttering fucking prick. Uh, But it's a really cool look inside the record industry and the music business. And I think most people would get a kick out of it in the sense of, oh, oh, that's why artists are always kind of half-assed complaining because everybody really is out to fuck them. Yes, they really are. And not in a good way. So now after that, I I found another documentary. Uh, Go watch Artifact. But I've watched another doc. I found another document. I'm a fucking porky pig today. Jesus Christ. So then after watching Artifact, I found another documentary called All or Nothing. It's about a band called August Christopher that was started by a guy named Chris Cheatham. Uh, And they've played over 3,000 shows, something like that. And it's basically the tagline to the documentary is the most, the busiest band you've never heard of. 
something like that. I'm not going to look it up right now because I'm, I'm, you guys know I don't do a whole lot of prep for my shows. I don't have shit tons of notes. Maybe I should change that. Hmm. I can do it right now. Let's pull it up. Let's go typey typey. All or nothing. Uh, wait. Okay, so it's All or Nothing, came out in 2014, and it says, This is the story of the hardest working rock band you've never heard of, gigging nonstop from 1999 to 2012. Uh, basically, the short version is, the guy named Chris Cheatham, like I said, started this band called August Christopher. Refused to give up on his dreams, refused to give up on the band. This is a really good look at persistence and perseverance. This guy just fucking refused to give up member after me he's had like 15 drummers 20 guitar players he's been a three piece a five piece a four piece he's done solo shit uh it's a really cool documentary tons and tons of footage that has been shot on camcorders and cell phones and small cameras probably a couple gopros uh but it's a really cool documentary that i think again my musician listeners should check out um, but the reason I bring both of them up and how it all ties back into the coffee thing, um, because it's fucking coffee. No, I'm just kidding. Is because it's interesting how people will settle for shit. Uh, for example, the, the August Christopher, the guy never got huge. Nobody really knows who he is. He's played over 3000 shows as August Christopher. He's probably played over a thousand or 2000 shows solo as an acoustic act made pretty good living i'm sure um got a beautiful wife two great kids three great kids from the looks of it i've stalked him on facebook and found him and found him on instagram that's right i said stalked because i wanted to talk to the guy uh sent him a message i haven't heard anything from him but it's just the point is it's really cool that he didn't he didn't let Anything stand in his way. He come hell or high water, he was gonna play. He was gonna make his band do something, which is you guys know me by now. That's I'm all about that shit. Success is viewed different ways, but success is the achievement of an aim or a purpose. That's the definition of it. And the guy, Chris, this Chris Cheatham dude, just fuck that. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna figure out how to do it. Good for him. Same thing with Artifact. Obviously. If you look at it on the surface, it's, well, it's Jared Leto, and he's in a band, and he's rich, and he's an actor, and he's got this and that. And it, that dude worked fucking hard. Him and his brother both. They worked their asses off. They came from Shitsville, Louisiana. I'm not backing them up. I'm not defending them. I don't know those people personally, obviously. But the guy, those two kids came from nothing, and they grew up, and they worked their ass off, and now they've got something. But... Jared Leto, the actor, Jared Leto, the musician, Jared Leto, the unsigned guy, whatever you want to call it, those, they had to go through bullshit too. And whether you have money or not, can you imagine being sued for $30 million? Hey, here's a lawsuit, 30 million bucks. Pay me when you get time. Uh, wait, do what? What the fuck are you telling? Yeah, let that sink in for a second. And it was for breach of contract, by the way, which is what the whole thing kind of pretty much stemmed from. Go check out the documentary. It's really, really cool. I think you'll dig it. I think you'll dig it. So going back to how I was getting ready to tell you this all ties into coffee is I think people get they get wrapped up in their own bullshit. They get used to things. They take no for an answer. They just, oh, it's just the way it is and I don't know. I just think that kind of like when I, when I switched back to the pot and I went, well, this coffee tastes like shit. I did it to save money. But the coffee really doesn't taste like shit. It just tastes a little bit different. But it was fine for the first, I don't know, umpteen million years I was drinking out of a fucking pot. So I think that that mindset might be why, I hate to be soapboxy, but but I think that might that mindset might be why there's not been anything musically especially, but anything creatively to, as Jesse Vest would say, blow my skirt up. Because I don't think people give as much effort as they used to. 
in person. What I mean by that is you go online, you go on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TwitFace, Fucksticks.com, whatever. Anywhere online, on the internet, anywhere. And everything looks amazing. It's so fucking beautiful. And it's perfect. And it's just like the Keurig. It's the perfect cup of coffee. It's the perfect picture all the time. But is it really? We both know the answer is no. Because there's a bazillion filters. There's 47 shots. There's 47 different angles. There's 47 kinds of lights. It's all kinds of shit. So digitally or online or on your phone screen or on your computer screen or your tablet or your laptop or your iWatch or your shit watch or your fucking toe ring, whatever, it looks great. And then you go see whatever it is in person, whether it's a model, an actor, a band, a musician, whatever. And you go, uh, hold up, do what? So the expectation is lowered. And I think that is part of the reason why live things are suffering. Some live things, not all of them. Obviously, it's movies and all that shit does well. And But I think that... Part of the reason why it's hard to get people in venues to see live music anymore is things like that. They know it's not perfect, so nobody wants to go see it. Well, it's not fucking supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to have warts and hiccups and bullshit and singers out of key and drummers that speed up and guitar players that hit a wrong note every now and then, not all the fucking time. Don't be lazy on me, kids. But I just think that that has a lot to do with it, that... The standard has changed. The acceptance level has changed. Just like going from a again, it's kind of the theme. I didn't I don't really do themes, but this is turning into a theme. Again, with the theme of the the whole coffee pot versus a curing. One's not necessarily better. One is just designed to pretty much be the same way every fucking time. So it's the same way every time. Well, if you go to a traditional coffee maker and you put in just a smidge more coffee grounds than you did the first time, it's not going to be the same. It's going to taste different. If you get a cheap coffee and fuck up your measurements, it's not going to taste the same. It's going to taste different. So there's, there's some similarities there, which is kind of interesting if you ask me. But I don't know. It's just something to think about. I think... I think we accept too much at face value and don't, I don't want to say we don't care about the consequences or anything, but we don't really, we don't really care why shit is the way it is. That's the best way I can say it. And when I say we, again, you guys know me by now, it's a blanket statement. I don't mean every single individual solitary person because then nothing happened. Oh my God, you guys are so cute. It doesn't happen that way. I get it. I just mean it's a blanket statement. I'm guilty. Most of you guys are guilty. Some of you guys are not guilty. But I I just think that we just take, oh, oh, okay, that that is what it is. is. Okay. All right, cool. And then, like I said, then you go see something live and you go, well, this isn't what I saw online. Well, no fucking shit. It's because online, it's perfect. It's supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be perfect. Because whoever posted it, wants followers, wants numbers, wants downloads, wants streams, wants whatever the hell it is. They want all that shit to be great and be high and do whatever. So it has to be perfect. When you go see it live and it's not perfect, people get mad. Uh, Have you guys not figured out how the fucking internet works yet? Everything's perfect online because it's supposed to be. So speaking of that, let's move on to social media issues. Alright, so here's something that I noticed, something that I have observed, and we all know I do not talk about politics on this show, but with all the shit with that judge dude, yes I know what his name is, I'm not just not going to fucking say it, all the shit that's going on with the judge dude, and all the shit that's going on with uh, the, the Me Too movement, and all these women coming forward, and, and all this crazy shit going on. The other day, I opened up the internet, because we are on social media issues, and this wasn't even on social media. This was on Yahoo. There's a story about this 
the, the judge dude, there was a story about this teacher that was acquitted for sexual assault. There was a story about this other guy that was charged with sexual assault. Da, 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 da. Four or five stories in a row. And then underneath that, it was the 13 celebrities that used to be strippers. Yep. You heard me right. I got nothing. I, I, I have nothing. I have no snappy comeback. I have no witty joke about it. Other than it's fucking sad. Make up your mind what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. That is why people are so confused. And that's it. I'm done with fucking social media issues for the week. So let's move on to stories from the stage. Alright, so winter's coming... And it's right around the corner, and we all know that Louisville winters kind of suck. Excuse me, I'm going to rephrase that. People that live in Louisville know that Louisville winters suck. Only because they're unpredictable, they're up and down, and did 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 I know there's plenty of people across the world that have it way worse than Louisville does. I'm not playing a fiddle. I'm just saying, out of all the places I've lived, Louisville, weather-wise, is the fucking weirdest. I have seen four seasons in one day here. Literally four seasons, one day. Not making that up. So, with winter coming, I wanted to share a winter story. A few years ago, I was in a band called uh, Jefferson Tark Bus. With, uh, some dude named Dave Moody. Some other fuckers. And Dave has an obsession with football. More importantly, an obsession with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So when Dave was in Billy Ray Cyrus... He had made a connection with somebody that works at at Heinz Field, which is where the Pittsburgh Steelers play. And we were fortunate enough, we being Tark Bus, we were fortunate enough to go play Heinz Field a few times. I'm not a football fan. I'm not a sports fan. You guys know that I don't give a fuck. However, going and playing in the Great Hall at Heinz Field was actually pretty cool. Pretty neat deal. The first time. The second time, it was all right. The third time, I wanted to kill motherfuckers. Because Dave thought it would be a great idea to go to Pittsburgh in November and play a show. Which, it's not that, it's not like it's a foreign country and November is a weird time. Other than it's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Great Hall is technically outside. It was six fucking degrees I will repeat that it was six fuck degrees might have even been minus zero with the wind chill I don't know all I know is it was goddamn cold and we played like fucking fools in the great hall and that was the last time I went to Pittsburgh thanks Dave you ruined it for me I'm just kidding or am I Seriously, it was fucking cold. I had some shit break on my rig. The guys had their guitars wouldn't stay in tune. I I don't know how Jack was even singing. I mean, it was fucking brutal. Brutally cold. Brutally stupid. And I will never, ever do that again. Playing with heaters around us. It was just, oh, God. Now, Dave, to his credit or delight, whatever you want to call it, He had a fucking blast, because when he got done, he got some wings, got to watch football. I got done. uh, I wanted to commit suicide. Not literally. I already gave you two, you're not getting three. Not literally, but I did think about it for a minute. Uh, But that was was interesting. Playing outside in six-degree weather, probably below zero, actually, by the time of the wind chill and all that shit, uh, in front of football fans who, quite honestly, once it gets within one minute of the game... They don't give two fucks about a band. They don't give two fucks about nothing but that football game. That's all they care about. Uh, the kind of the uh, where we were situated was, um, I guess, at the 50-yard line, which makes sense to you football people. Not doesn't make sense to me other than I know it's halfway through the field. And about a minute before the game starts, those people in the Great Hall scatter like roaches. In the when you turn the light on, and the roaches, yeah, that's kind of what it was. It was fucking crazy. So there you go. Just word of warning: don't play outside in 
Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in November. It's very fucking cold. All right, so let's move on to what am I listening to? So this week I'm going to throw two things at you. One, uh, I've listened to Josta show for a couple of years now. Uh, it's Jamie Josta from Hate Breed. He's the host, and he has a lot of different people on there. Um, mostly, the most of the people he has on there are from heavier bands. But he, uh, he's got some really cool people on there. And last week, or two weeks ago, whenever it was, I don't remember. I listened to it last week. It could have been from a month ago. Who the fuck knows? He had Corey Taylor on there. Corey Taylor is the singer for Slipknot and Stone Sour. And if you've never heard any of his interviews or watched any of his interviews or read any of his shit, he's a smart motherfucker. And he's pretty damn funny. Uh, so... I would say check out the Josta Show, specifically that episode. If you've never heard the Josta Show or have never checked it out, start with the Corey Taylor episode. The second one I want to give you is another podcast. Uh, D. Snyder is back with a podcast called I Want to Talk. Uh, he had a podcast a couple of years ago. didn't last very long. It didn't do very well. I don't know why. Don't care. I don't wouldn't even begin to take a guess but he is back he does have a new podcast on the digital gas network which is jamie josta's network so that's why they're going hand in hand but he had on his second episode he had jj french from twisted sister and it was a really cool episode i encourage you guys to go check it out uh it was interesting some of the shit that they were talking about in some of these statistics that they were throwing around, for example, we're not going to take it and I want to rock are the second and third. If my memory serves me, you have to go listen to the episode to verify a hundred percent. But if my memory serves me, what they were talking about was those two songs. We're not going to take it. And I want to rock are the second and third most licensed used songs in history. Meaning, TVs, movies, commercials, sporting events, whatever. Those two songs have been licensed more than any other song in history other than the one that's on top, which I didn't bother to research it because I'm a fucking terrible podcaster. I'm horrible. Yep, I admit it. But I didn't care because it's not really relevant to the story. Point is, those two songs are second and third. So that's pretty fucking crazy when you think about it. A, quote, big dumb rock band from the 80s has had that much influence. Uh, not to mention, while I'm talking about Twisted Sister, this just popped in my head. If you haven't seen the documentary We Are Twisted Fucking Sister on Netflix, you need to watch that. Really, really cool documentary. Uh, it's basically about the first 10 years before they even got signed, which is fucking awesome. Because everybody knows when they got signed, they didn't last very long. Well, they were together almost 10, 15 years before they got signed. It was fucking crazy. Anyway, go check those things out. The Josta Show and D. Snyder's I Want to Talk. Oh, yeah. Then there's this thing. All right, Mr. Shitlip, here we go. So, I was somewhere the other day. This is the stupidest thing I've heard all week. This is a good one. And I've actually gotten this several, several times. Just not this dumb. Uh, I was somewhere, don't remember where, and this guy complimented me on my tattoos, which I do get compliments a lot. I get them often on my tattoos, not on me. And I said the same thing I say every time I get complimented on my tattoos. Thank you very much. I have a really great artist. That was my response. I have a really great artist. And the guy looked at me and he said, Man, you do all those yourself? How the fuck you do that? Uh, the octopus arms come out from under my shirt behind my back and I just go to fucking town on myself with 18... Ta really? Now, some of you know that you can tattoo yourself. It is entirely possible. But most tattoo artists that tattoo themselves usually tattoo their legs. Because it's the easiest part to tattoo. It's really hard to tattoo your opposite arm. Uh, not to mention, both of my arms are pretty much covered. So I'm really fucking hard for me to do both arms. <sighs> tattoo myself. Wow. 
Hey, dog, you party. Well, that's it, kids. That's the show for the week. So obviously it was a short one. Just wanted to talk to you about a few things. Uh, have you do some research on some documentaries and some podcasts and maybe think about the differences between a Keurig and a, and a traditional coffee pot. Uh, it got me thinking. I don't know. You, you guys probably think I'm nuts. That's fine. I, I have a few screws loose. But it got me thinking about some shit and maybe taking a step back and just kind of looking around and going, wow, things aren't really as shitty as I think they are. Or you can just look at Yahoo and see all those stories I was talking about and then go, wow, things are really fucked up. Which things are seriously fucked up. But I also think that a lot of reason things are fucked up is because people let them stay fucked up. Again, it's a almost teetering on a political discussion that I am not going to have with anybody, much less myself. Whew. I'm talking about smashing my face into a fucking wall. But some shit to think about. Some cool documentaries to check out. Some cool podcasts to check out. Uh, I am working on some new shit. I do have merch. You like that really delayed pause there at the end of that? I just kind of left that pause there. and I just left that pause there just so you can have it. I do have merch. It is sitting in my garage. Uh, but I don't have the website built yet. Notice I said yet. I am working on it. Hopefully it will be, hell, who knows? It could be built by the time, or it could be finished by the time you hear this, by the time this posts. I really fucking doubt it because I know me, but I am working on it. I am almost at completion. Uh, So I have a website coming where you can get some merch. Uh, You can check out some pictures and stories. I I will write some stories on there. Uh, very short stories. I'm not going to fucking... the oh, hell no. Uh, probably throw up some excerpts from the book and throw up some pictures of me of old. You can see pictures of me with a mullet. It's fantastic. It is spectacular mullet. It was fantastically glorious. I don't know what the hell that was. But anyway, uh, the website will be up soon. I do have merch. So I have some cool shit coming. I've got some people I'm excited to talk to coming up in the next few weeks and uh that's it thank you guys so much for subscribing and rating and reviewing and if you haven't done those things please go fucking do it (sighs) how many times i gotta fucking tell you guys i'm just kidding seriously if you uh if you haven't subscribed please do so if you haven't rated please do so and if you haven't reviewed please do that as well uh it just helps new people find the show Uh, So if you guys could help me out on that, I would appreciate it. Let's get the numbers up. I would like more people to hear from my idiotic ass because I think I've got some cool points of view and some cool shit to say. And that was arrogant. And I don't care because it's my show. And as I say at the end of every episode of my show, (gasps) go do some shit. Seriously, get the fuck out of here. Beat it. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to go do some shit. Really pretty day. It's another pretty day. It's another... Borderline fall day, not quite falling yet. It's going to be falling yet. So until next time, I will talk at you soon.